Hello and welcome to Awakening, the blog. Today I would like to share a um, story that was part of the Twin Flame story. And uh, it all started uh, during a summer. I was on a summer vacation and I met this lady that uh, did uh, hypnotherapy. By uh, that time, I think it was like around uh, two or two or three years ago, maybe two. Um, I was not very much in contact with him because I decided that okay, since he's in love with somebody else and uh, all he does is tell me about her or things like that, um, I was not going to keep in contact with him very often. So I was very much concentrated in my process in my life, and. Um, once I met her, I said to her that I wanted to work um, uh, with hypnotherapy about my weight issue. Since I had been bullied um, for my body weight all my life, I didn't fit the norm. I was not the kind of person that uh, fit the norm in any possible way in this society. Therefore, I always felt this rejection towards my, my body in at home and uh, outside in the society. And so um, I have uh, this wound regarding the body weight. And I wanted to work with her in hypnotherapy to see if there was something that I was carrying from other lifetimes that I needed to, to, work, to work through. I had already talked with my parents about it and I told them all that I have felt about uh, not fitting the society standards and how they um, manage their beliefs, especially my mom, um, about my body weight. And I thought it was pretty much healed. We, we cried, we had a great therapy when I, I talked individually with each, with each member of my family about it. And, uh, <clears throat> It was hard, but it was worth it. But I thought that maybe there was something else that I needed to work. Uh, and uh, when I met Dana, I decided, uh, okay, I'm going to try hypnotherapy. In my practice, I normally use uh, guided imagery for uh, a lot of the psychotherapy that I, I offer my clients. And so I was uh, familiar with that technique and I really enjoyed it. It really worked for me. But um, I was not very fond of hypnotherapy, so I said, okay, I'm going to try. And um, so my mind was focused on working the body weight thing uh, in the hyp hypnotherapy session. So we started the session, and she took me through many layers of deep relaxation, and then uh, I went on in this journey. And uh, this journey, interestingly enough, and uh, we'll talk about whether it's true or not true, whatever one experiences in the hypnotherapy session, but this journey took me like 6,000 years before the common era. Um, so it was way back. And suddenly um, I was in this place like we were living very much in nature, connected with nature. I was a guy, a young guy, and uh, I started this journey and climbed uh, in a tree, on a tree. Very connected to nature, amazing. It was like, um, it was a time where, um, People seem to communicate at different levels, not only verbally, but maybe different ways. I didn't know at that time what era, what age that belonged to. I was just living my experience. And uh, suddenly I go to this village and um, there was this girl who was my partner. And uh, this girl was him in this lifetime. We were, uh, we recognized each other as 
one to the other like twin flames basically so we we were um, we knew what it felt to be one but it seemed to be a time of change maybe like the same one we're living right now a change of age changing consciousness and in this in this sense the change of age in those days was not going up to higher consciousness but going down to a lower consciousness and uh, so I remember I felt this need to leave the town and go searching for other lands I left her I think I was pretty much self-centered those days since I took for granted that relationship that we were one and that you know we were always going to be one um, I left her I left the town and went looking for other places I came back six years later and uh, when I came to the town I came to see her and uh, she was soulless. I don't know what happened and I didn't want to find out what happened during the session because I was already too much in tears when I saw that when I came back there was no life in her eyes. Her soul was taken away and she was holding a, 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 a baby uh, a son or a daughter, I don't remember that exactly uh, on her waist embracing this boy but no life whatsoever and uh, when I approach her she didn't recognize me not anymore she looked at me and like she was spaced out totally and I felt guilty it was horrible it was a horrible feeling because then I, I felt that I abandoned her and uh, I felt terribly guilty for what had happened to her. I could not help her anymore because it seems that she had married somebody and that uh, she was to totally, totally gone. And then um, I had to leave the town and I had to go someplace that I could leave close enough but far, far enough from the town uh, and keep my eye on her and I never actually forgave myself for having abandoned her and uh, for making, go, making her go through that horrible experience of soul loss. I ended up this um, experience very, very hurt. And then as I went back in tears to my place, I, I connected with him and I, I, I asked him to forgive me and he said well what for and I said well I experienced this I don't know if it resonates with you but I experienced this so I told him the story and uh, he said he fe it felt familiar somehow and okay he will forgive me he said but it was not, ex you know, it was my experience again and uh, I had to work through that forgiveness again for a couple of years and uh, maybe not a couple of years, it was a, a year after that that I again connected with him regarding the forgiveness I even called him on the phone and I said, you know I can't hold on to this anymore. I'm so sorry for abandoning you, for for having you go through that experience. And somehow the, his situation this lifetime um, of being soulless somehow <laughs> it's very similar to that one. So I don't know if what I I experienced really happened. It's it's possible that it happened because you know it's how can I have those memories? I could remember anything. I mean I could have created any kind of story if that's the case of hypnotherapy, hypnotherapy but I created this one or I remembered this one which I think it's more like that and 
there was a reason why my soul or my higher self was sending me to experience this lifetime in relation to the situation that we're living today. Um, I remember the, the many times he said to me, don't abandon me, you are abandon me, abandoning me. And I said, no, I'm not abandoning you, but you know, you, you have chosen a path. And again, it's interesting, he chooses to, to be in love with somebody else that um, it's not exactly the sense of connection to his inner truth. I don't know how to help him come back to his, his soul, to his body, like a soul retrieval thing that he would need to do. I've done as much as I can. I suggested that he did some psychotherapy, some alternative psychotherapy like Gestalt or maybe transpersonal psychotherapy to help him do this soul retrieval. But that's as, as, as far as I can do so far. Uh, I tried once working on him and his chakras. Uh, I concentrated and I asked permission to his soul, not him directly, but to his soul. And I said, I, I want to help you go back to, to the body so um, to do that connection. So I'm going to do... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to do this uh, chakra therapy. So I started doing, I, I did it for around seven days. And I would look and I would sense and do the, the, the chakra balancing on him, long distance chakra balancing. And uh, interest, because this is just amazing, you know, like when I finally was able to open uh, his fifth chakra, which is the communication chakra. He communicated with me. Ay, 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 it's, it's, I know, I know long distance therapy does work. I've done it on a couple of friends and, and I, I've seen the results. So um, I thought by balancing the chakras, it was going to help him to align so the soul can go back in. But I don't know exactly what's missing. I'm, I was really afraid to find out in that hypnotherapy what happened to make her lose her soul. I still don't want to see it because, you know, I still f feel the guilt of, of uh, being responsible for it. And, uh, and so, um, it just makes it very hard and I don't know if as long as I don't see it the, the possibilities are not going to open. I don't know. <laughs> I'll probably have to work through that uh, for a while too. But um, it was interesting to see his reaction every time I asked him to forgive me and I said you don't please don't forgive me with the words. I need to be forgiven with your heart. And um, and well we're still in touch. <laughs> There's uh, so much that needs to be worked on still. Um, but this was a very, very painful experience, a painful memory. I'm sure there are other lifetimes we've spent together and they were very fulfilling and very happy. But it seems that we need to heal those that were not and especially this one that has to do with the soul loss. I mean, God, it's amazing. I remember the face she had with no shine on her eyes, looking down to the earth, like being completely disconnected. No sense of, of herself, no sense of recognizing even me. And I feel that's, that's what has happened this lifetime. Also, you know, one of the pains I've had is that he doesn't recognize me. He doesn't remember who I am for him. Not consciously, because I think unconsciously that's why he keeps on connected to me. And so um, it was interesting. It was really interesting. And then um, I read a book by, uh, uh, I don't remember. Uh, Dr. Oh, well. oh. 
Brian Weiss. I read the book by Brian Weiss, uh, Love, I don't know the translation in English, Love Ties, or it has, to do, in Spanish is Lazos de Amor, which is, has to do with uh, something regarding love, and it's about uh, um, soulmate relationships. And the first paragraph I read, the first paragraph of the book I read, I was in total tears <laughs> because I felt connected to those things. I was living that thing. I sent the book to him. He never said anything. At least he says that he doesn't feel that with me. He feels it's with somebody else. So those are the, the, his, uh, his answers regarding these soul level experiences are always making me doubt that he might be the twin flame. But when I go back to those experiences that I, I've mentioned before in other video blogs, I cannot deny it. I want to, but uh, I keep getting more and more um, signs and also experiences. Some of them I will share with you on the next video blog. So. Thank you for being part of the story, for uh, um, being there and hopefully what I've experienced, that that's the idea that I'm trying to convey to you through an ex a personal experience. The idea that I wanted to share was uh, the process that we got to go to awaken to our soul level from having this normal kind of relationships and life from the emotional level all the way to the spiritual. It's a major difference and it's a big step. And so that's why I have uh, shared with you the process of uh, going through this dichotomy of uh, the emotional body to the spiritual body and how to align them. I still have a couple more chapters to share about this story that I hope you uh, follow it and that you find um, some sort of uh, inspiration or answers or uh, that you can ha maybe develop more questions in yourself to, to get the answers. Sometimes it's about the question, not the answer. So <laughs> there we are. If you have any comments, please uh, do them under the link in the, in the blog. You can also subscribe to be notified when we upload uh, new posts on the blog or as well in our YouTube channel. Thank you very much and until the next chapter. Bye.